timer on anything that you prefer. Ok, the first thing that we need to do is to create a transparent video. We can do this inside the project panel, click the new icon and select transparent video. In the window that pops up you can leave all the settings to the default. And that is because we need to use the same number of frames as our sequence to make the countdown timer work properly. In this case 25 frames per second. We can now put the transparent video that we created on top of the video clip on the timeline. And you can extend this transparent video as long as you want the countdown timer to be. So in this case I'll go for around 10 seconds. Next we're going to apply an effect to the transparent video. Inside the effects panel search for the time code effect. You'll find this one under a video effects video. I'll drag this one over to the timeline and apply it to the transparent video. As you can see here in the program monitor, the time code effect is displayed on top of the video. Next we're going to do some adjustments inside the effects control panel. First we're going to remove this field symbol. We can simply do this by unchecking this checkbox here. And next we're going to set opacity to 0. This will remove the box around the numbers. And we'll also change the size of the text. We can do this by increasing the percentage here. Ok, let's have a look at the numbers. The first part represents hours. Next we've got minutes, seconds and frames. For, th for this countdown timer we only want the minutes and the seconds. To hide the other parts we're going to apply another effect. Inside the effects panel search for the crop effect. You can find this one under video effects transform. We'll also apply this effect to the transparent video. Then inside the effects control panel click on the crop effect and these blue lights will appear here in the program monitor. You can use this to crop the transparent video. As you can see now we've only got the minutes and seconds left. If you want you can also reposition the timer. You can do this inside the effects control panel by changing the position values in the motion section. Ok, if I give this a playback you can see that the timer is counting up instead of counting down. To make the countdown we would need to reverse the clock. Normally we can do this by right clicking and select speed and duration. And then enable the checkbox for reverse speed, but this time it's greyed out. But there is a way to fix this, let's close this one for now and then right click on the transparent video and select nest. We can simply accept the default name and click ok. And now if we go to speed and duration again, we can enable reverse speed. And as you can see, now the timer counts, the other option would be to use the tint effect. You can find this one under video effects color correction as well. I will also apply this one to the transparent video and inside the effects control panel disable the change to color effect. And then change map white to another color. And if I pick the right one, I can change this one to red as well. Next steps we're going to create the more advanced countdown timer. I've already got a background here on the timeline, but of course you can use your own background or not use any background at all. We're going to start here by creating a circle and we're going to do this with the... creating a circle and we're going to do this with the ellipse tool. And this ellipse tool is part of the essential graphics panel. You can find it here underneath the pen tool. If you have the ellipse tool enabled you can click anywhere in the program monitor and then draw the circle. And if you hold the shift key you will get a perfectly proportional circle. And once you're done you need to head over to the essential graphics panel. First let's center the circle by clicking on these buttons here. And then I will disable the fill and enable the stroke. If you want you can also change the thickness here, I'll put it somewhere like this. Then I will duplicate this shape layer by right clicking on the layer and select duplicate. Let's rename the duplicate layer so we know which one it is. Now all we have to do is to scale it down, somewhere around 90% will do. Ok, so now I've got the duplicate layer selected, now we will change the color of the stroke. Let's just choose white for this one. Move over to the timeline and then extend the duration of the essential graphics layer so it will match the background. And after that it's time to head over to the effects panel where we're going to search for the effect named radial wipe. 
You'll find this one under Video Effects Transition. Let's apply this one to the graphics layer and head over to the Effects Control Panel. In there, we're going to enable keyframes for transition completion by clicking on this stopwatch icon here. Then put the keyframe that we created on the beginning of the clip and create another one with the completion value of 100% and put it at the end of the clip. If I now scrub to the timeline, you can see what we've created so far. We can make the animation go a bit more smoother by right-clicking on the keyframe and select Ease In for the last one and Ease Out for the first one. And this is how it looks so far. And now all we've got left is to add a simple countdown timer, with the right duration of course, just like we did in the beginning of this video. And that all together will look like this.